Hello, my name is Greg Stewart and I'm here today to speak to you about some of the methods used to obtain a confession during the witch trial era. It may seem bizarre to us today that somebody would confess to such crimes, bearing in mind it would end in inevitable death. However, to be accused of a witch was a kind of hopeless situation um, once you went into the system. Various methods were used to extract a confession from you and I will talk about some of these methods. One of the commonest methods used in Scotland was sleep deprivation. During this process, the accused would not be allowed to sleep or rest as they were walked around their jail cell until they were physically exhausted. If they were allowed to have time in their jail cell alone, methods would be used to prevent them from falling asleep and getting a good rest. One of the methods used was called a heretic's fork. I have an example of a heretic's fork here. This simple device was fitted with sharp prongs at both ends, and we placed under the chin and under the, the chest bone. It would be secured tightly around the accused neck, and it would mean that they could not move, or they would risk puncturing their skin through the sharp forks at either end. The use of devices such as the heretic's fork would ensure that the accused could not sleep for days on end, even when there were no guards available. This would generally be enough to get a confession from anybody. However, for those who continued to resist, more physical torture could be brought in. In Scotland, there were various methods of physical torture used against accused witches. This could include having your fingernails pulled out with pliers and pins pushed into the exposed flesh underneath. Another particularly cruel device was called the booties. This was a metal or wooden boot that was put over the, the foot and leg up to around about the kneecap. Wooden wedges were then hammered into the top of the boot, slowly crushing the leg. It would depend on how many blows were delivered at one time, but most people after two or three would end up confessing. One of the best known methods used was the thumb screws. These could be used on all the fingers and even to crush the toes of the, the accused. I have an example here, again an early example of such a device. The fingers would be placed into here like that and then it would be slowly screwed down until the metal bar continued down, slowly crushing the fingers. A torturer may not go straight to crushing the fingers or the toes with the thumb screws. They would sometimes just tighten it around the joints to cause excruciating pain to the accused. This would then bring a confession after hours of being in agony. If the accused was still not confessing to the crime, more extreme methods could be used. One of these is called the flesh rippers. They do exactly what they say, they rip your flesh from your body. An extreme method, but one that got results. I have an example here, which is called the crocodiles. The crocodile was not a device commonly used in Scotland. These were mainly used across in mainland Europe. However, the ones used in Scotland were similar design, um, simple pliers sharp prongs which they would clamp round the flesh, twist it, pull it to remove parts of the, the flesh from the body. Often these devices did not need to be used, just the sight of them being heated in the fire before being brought over to the accused was enough to bring a confession. Another device that could be used is one called the Scald's Bridle. This was essentially a metal cage that fitted round the accused head. It would have a metal spike that went through the front, pushing the tongue down and stopping them from speaking. The example of a scald's bridle that I have here is a more elaborate one than those that we used in Scotland. This was specifically designed to numb all the senses of the accused. Their vision would be blocked, their sense of smell would be blocked. Their tongue could be pulled through the teeth, which would then be tightened to stop them speaking. If it was over tightened, it would simply rip their tongue off. 
and every time they moved, the bell would start to ring. Slowly but surely wearing this device would drive you insane. Another method used across Scotland was called pricking the witch. This was a process of pushing a pin into the flesh of the accused across every inch of their body until a spot was found where they felt no pain. That was believed to be the devil's mark. Alternatively, the accused could confess to end the process. I hope through this talk I've given you a bit of an insight into why anyone would confess to witchcraft. It was once written that the intention of the process was to make the accused feel their life was so worthless they would give anything to have it taken away from them. Thank you for watching.